Well, time for us to try and continue our remarkable start to the season with one of the toughest challenges, no, by far the toughest challenge we've ever had in this save. We are facing Pep Guardiola's Manchester City in a Champions League league phase, and even more remarkably, is to maintain a 100% start. <laughs> Yes, hello and welcome along to part 131 of this FM23 Builder Nation story, Lifting Spirits with me, Daniel. As you can see from the league table behind my head, the season has started very well. As you can see from the finances screen to the right, we're not going to have any worries on that front ever again. And the big question we were asking, what, a year or so ago when Merivale lost in and Scully came in, is what difference would they make next time we played in the European qualifiers and group stages? Well, the fact of the matter is they got us into the Champions League for the first time. They saw us through a tricky qualifier. And although we've played on paper the two weakest teams in the Champions League group, we have picked up six points with the ruthless edge from the two stars showing. They are match winners. They're proving it week after week after week. If you're looking forward to seeing what they've been doing, and how we get on against, well, Pep Guardiola's dynasty today. And please do put a thumbs up on it. It's going to be a fun one. They've still got the likes of Harlan, Foden. They've got Gavi, the old Barcelona player in. But they've also got a stream of brilliant new stars coming through as well. So it's going to be an interesting one. And maybe our run stops there. But what a run it's been. It's been a record one for the club. A number of wins in all competitions. A lot of them dominant. And I think the big thing you can notice on this screen is just how many goals we're scoring. Yes, we've let in a few silly goals in some games, but we're a flowing team, we're a joy to watch, and we are constantly scoring twos, threes, and fours. You were with me as we beat Derry City to make the Champions League groups with a brilliant win. We backed that up with a 6-1 win against Glen Torren, you saw, and a deadline day signing of a backup striker who was injured but coming back later in the month. And let's be fair, he's picked up already. You can see one of his goals on the screen here. Let's go through the games that we've played though because in the League Cup we won 5-2 away at Larn. To be fair, it wasn't really much of a contest because the game was over after half an hour. Merivale Austin had scored one, Scully had wrapped up his hat-trick and the format made it a brace just after half-time after Larn had given us a little scare. The same result at home to Carrick in the Antrim Shield, a very different 11 in this one. We had the likes of Neil Daly scoring from the penalty spot before Cameron Goss and a Dermot Lafferty brace wrapped up a very comfortable win. A 2-0 win at Porter Down in the league thanks to those two players again, Merivale Austin and Scully, very much the difference makers this season. Scully got a brace away at Hoffenheim in what at the time was our most famous ever result. We managed to hold on for the last 15 after Duncan McKenzie got sent off. It was a very eventful day for him. Duncan McKenzie, he made amends on the Saturday, scored the winner at home to Larn in the league. To be honest, they probably weren't fit enough and it was my fault that we weren't at our best there. We were though in a 5-0 win in midweek against Warren Point. An early red card settled the game again but Cowan had already scored the opener. He got a brace alongside Merivale Austin and Mark Scully got his goal as well. A 4-1 win away at Glenarvan with Kashif beating the youngster getting a goal after Mark Wilson, our former striker, had given the host the lead. We also got a brace of penalties from Neil Daly and one from Damian Dunn before a 2-0 win at Copenhagen as we again nicked two set-piece goals in the first half in a game we were otherwise outplayed in. I'm really intrigued to see what our home attendance is today as well. We have been getting seven or 800 in the games where we'd normally see no away fans, so Porter down 700 instead of 400, same for our broth. I'm hoping that's a good sign. But we managed to beat Institute by four goals to one. Miss Alidis scored in the first minute of his first start. It was an incredible effort with Dunn and Lafferty getting a brace as well. We wrapped up a 6-3 win away at our broth with Merivale Austin's brace, Scully's brace, Carr, and who scored the last one? Miss Alidis off the bench, there you go. A 5-0 win in the League Cup against Portadown. You read it right, Mark Scully scored all five of them. And then we rested everyone for the Antrim Shield against Ballymena. A hat-trick for Scully, one for Griffiths, one for Mills, and one for Neil Daly from the spot. But what a start to the season. Eight wins out of eight. Let's have a quick look at how the other two are getting on in Europe as well. They played their first games last time out as we're second in the Champions League phase. It's remarkable. 
let's go and have a look at the Europa Conference League. Linfield and Larn both drew, which I'm pretty sure they had tough first fixtures. I've got to go and look at this because that might be more impressive than it looks. Linfield were at home to Genk and Larn were at home to Nice. They equalised in the 90th minute. They are two pretty impressive results, to be fair. And this Thursday coming up, what have they got? Linfield are away in Cyprus. You probably expect them to win. And Larn away in Romania. They've beaten that side in qualifying before. So all looking good on that front. Let's get through to the fixtures and play Crusaders. It's going to be the first team for this one. It is a very good side on paper. Nearly 2,000 fans in, which is great. However, a couple of little injury concerns for this one. First of all, you can see that both of the Murphys are playing who wouldn't normally. That is because Neil Kane and Gavin Reed have both got little injuries. They'll be back for midweek. Goss is returning from about a month out. He's struggled a little bit, but it has meant that the likes of Hamilton and Mills, who might have become unhappy otherwise, are playing. A lot of our cup games have fallen during the international breaks, and Owen Kidd is a Northern Irish under-21 international. So that sign-in until the festive period probably won't work out to be that good. The rest of the team, though, is pretty strong. It's what you'd largely expect. We still haven't really decided who's going to be our left winger this season. Probably will be beaten as he improves, but for now... I want to stick with the tried and trusted. That means we've got Dara Murphy in goal. Tommy Murphy at right back with Stow on the left. Mackenzie and Smith, the two centre halves. Jude and Gash, the midfield two with Merival Austin ahead of them. And then Parry and Cowan behind Scully up front. Look at that front two. 35 goals between them already this season. We've got Miss Alidis coming back to fitness behind them as well. I mean, we're in great shape domestically. So let's go and get through. Don't forget... Those two Champions League wins, 2.4 million into the club for each one. We've made more prize money from those two wins than we made in Europe the previous two seasons individually. I mean, it's ridiculous. If we have a look at the Crusaders side today. It is something that's becoming a bit of an issue because Lahn and Linfield and Colrain to an extent, they're still signing players. They're still keeping up. But what we're starting to find with the bottom half teams is that they're just sticking with the players that they had and they're not going to that next level, maybe because they've had no European money. So that does mean the likes of Sean Moore and Ian Walker, who were here, what, 10 years ago now? They're still playing for this. Probably not as far as 10 years, is it? But seven or eight years on, and we've still got those guys coming up against us. So it is a league that's starting to split in sort of two halves, which is a bit of a worry. But you can see Crusaders still got the bigger fan base here, albeit ours is improving. Let's go and get into the first half and hopefully with them on the back of five straight defeats this will be a very comfortable day as early doors is a crusaders free kick just two and a half on the clock big ball over the top which will go straight to dara murphy not too worried about him coming in today as i don't think he's gonna have to do much but this time he rolls the ball out to stow and mckenzie into jude in midfield and gash big ball over the top to scully he loves a goal from knees oh wow I did not expect that to go 20 yards over the bar. The quicker we forget about that, the better. Because at the moment, we're just not hitting the target. And that's not like us, as Merival Austin has got a corner. Getting a fair few assists from this method as well. As that one's headed away, it's going out on the other side. I mean, it's been dominant again. You can see a lot of these sides just can't get out against us now. And it's how quickly we can score and then how many times we can break them down. This is a barrage of corners. I'm hoping that one of them's going to lead to something. Otherwise, this is a very wasted highlight. As Merival Austin puts the third in in succession, in swinger to the back post, Smith's up, six foot six. Fair play, Jordan's the first person domestically I've seen compete with him for a long time. Because we've got another one here just two minutes later. Merival Austin in, Mackenzie across goal, good save, McDonald. Still nil-nil. Bit of a strange one, this, because we have dominated the game. We've not created too much clear cut, just Scully's one that was blasted over. But Smith heads away here towards O'Kane. Merival Austin intercepts. Are they thinking about Wednesday? Playing Manchester City, the biggest game we've had in his save. Well, not for now, because Merival Austin, lovely one too with Cowan. He's becoming really good in that position as well, because he's such a good finisher. He just drifts into those roles between the defender. And where teams haven't got a hold in mid, or where they've got two traditional centre halves, they just can't cope. It should be 2-0, it's only one, but it doesn't look like there's any threat. Institute have just had a man off against Linfield, and our Northern Ireland start, Mackie, has scored. So both lead 1-0 at the break, but let's be honest, we shouldn't really be worrying about the title this year. 
Let's go and get into the second half, try and get the second goal, and then we'll start resting people for midweek. 25 to go. It's a free kick for Jude. Hits the woodwork, more clears it. We'll see out this corner, and then we'll make a substitution if need be. Murphy's struggling at right back, but he's not going to play midweek, so he can stay on. Smith is one I definitely want to rest. Merivale lost in the same. And then it's just which other two or three we can give a breather to. This free kick looks a good position. Let's hope Jude puts it in and then we can rest people comfortably. Damien Jude, there you go. Beautiful free kick. First goal of the season. And a lovely little cartwheel to celebrate. Lisbon Distillery 2-0 up. Let's go and rest some legs. In the number 10 role, it will be done for Merivale Austin. We're going to take off Scully for Miss Elidis as we build his fitness up. I'm also going to take off Stephen Cowan. We'll put Beaton on the right to give him some game time. Owen Kidd on for Luke Smith. And then Carr will come on for Stow as well. Because I want to give these youngsters a bit of football and get them involved as much as possible. Five changes made, 25 to go. And that should be game over. Well, 15 minutes to go. Still no shots against as Crusaders. One of the poorest sides in this division. They just can't get out. We give them the ball back there with Gash, who maybe I should have rested, but Owen Kidd's got the ball in defence, finds Gash again. He carries it down the line. Beaton gets in behind his fullback. Brilliant run from him. Cuts it back. Is he brought down? No, it's a good recovery. Be interesting to see if we can keep Owen Kidd. He wouldn't join us permanently last summer because of our reputation, but hopefully it's growing enough now as Miss Elidis is in. Oh, that's delightful. That is glorious for Miss Elidis. Lovely little dink over the goalkeeper. Everyone expected him to go far corner, including me. He just dinked it back the way it came. That's a glorious goal. McDonald clears it downfield, and this is the difference. We're bringing Damien Dunn and Miss Elidis off the bench. It's a different kettle of fish. Beaton's been threatening as well as he finds Murphy. Back to Jordan Gash. In he goes. Brilliant goal. And as these sides start to tire late on, albeit most of them are professional now, as they start to tie up, we just wipe them apart. A brilliant team, a brilliant attacking display again. And it is Lisbon Distillery who are going to romp to the title. And this time, I'm very confident we defend it. As Tommy Murphy gets it at right back, brought down by Moore. And against his former club, Sean Moore is going to be sent off. I can't celebrate that. He scored some good goals for us and some important ones. But that was silly. It was frustration. And we're 90 minutes played. A 4-0 win. Lots of players rested for midweek. And Manchester City, the biggest game in our history, is coming up in four days' time. We'll be back in a minute for it for our first home Champions League game in Northern Ireland. Well, it's fitness test time ahead of the biggest game of this save so far. And Pep Guardiola in the build-up to this, still at City with his dynasty, has claimed that this is an easy game. So we want to try and prove him wrong and make this as difficult as possible. However, we are wary of the fact that it's Manchester City. And whether they rotate against us or not, they are going to be a pretty good side. Well, they're not rotating because there's no sign of Foden or Haaland, who are both older players on the bench now. Yes, both of them are on the bench in their early to mid-30s. So let's go and pick our team. Hopefully, there will be some returning stars. Oh! Hang on. It's at our own stadium. What's going on here? Does that mean the rules for the Champions League stadium are lower than for the Europa League? Or has something just happened here that's a glitch? Because that doesn't make sense. However, it's at our stadium with 7,000 people and it's sold out. That is the most exciting bit of the story so far. Let's go and have a look at who we can pick because ideally... Both Gavin Reed and Neil Kane will come back in and they are both fit to do so today, which is great news for us. They will both take their place on the bench, the two that drop out. And this is therefore the team we're going for today. Everyone that featured on the weekend, apart from Neil Kane and Gavin Reed coming back in after injury. This is huge. This is a monumental moment. We're going to drop to balance when we get into it. It's what we've done for all the European games. But for now, there is just excitement in the air. And even if we lose it 5-0, frankly, we've got one hell of a day here. Haaland is on the bench. Foden is not. If we look at the starting 11, it is all regens apart from Gabby. So 13 years in, they are definitely making sure they're regenerating the squad. A lot of younger players and Pep Guardiola at 64 is still going strong. So let's go and get the lads through to the first half. The balance mentality to be played. 
and the Champions League music will blare out weirdly. Right, this is even worse now. What is going on? We're at Lisbon Distillery Stadium. It's supposed to be a 7,000 attendance. And there's no fans in the two stands that are terraces because of whatever the rules are. But our whole stadium only holds 7,000. So how on earth have we meet the attendance without doing that? There's no one in any of the others. This has got to be a glitch, surely. There's not just 7,000 away fans in here. And they're certainly not all in that one stand. We have definitely met a problem here. We'll have a look at the attendance figure after, but I'm not quite sure what's going on. The Champions League music blares out and it's been overshadowed, but into the first half we go and we're on the front foot bizarrely, although City win it back pretty quick. Look at the pace they're passing the ball at. Cowan nicks it though. Into Gash. God, if we take the lead, I'll be jumping for joy. Mark Scully on the volley. Oh, he's hit the post. It's a stunning move. What an effort that was. No referee. The attendance is 7,000. It's the first time we haven't had a referee either that's listed as a real one. I don't know what's going on here as Gash gets a 1-2 with Smith. Maybe all those glitches mean we're going to get something special tonight. Who knows? As Merival Austin goes up, he wins it again. This is a good start from Distillery. Cowan's put Merival Austin in. What is going on? What the hell is happening here? Johnny Merival Austin has scored a goal. Yes, he could probably play in the Premier League, but he's about the only one in this squad. We've got to have a look at Man City. How good are they? And what on earth is happening? Because Manchester City, their whole team is on multiple hundred thousand a week. I mean, look at them. They're world-class Premier League players. I mean, top, top class. How on earth are we beating teams like this? And I know we're not going to beat them over 90 minutes, but we're 1-0 up. We've dominated 20 and we've won our first two Champions League games. It feels like the year where everything's clicking, but this is a little bit surreal. Maybe it's because Pep said it was an easy game. Is there complacency? Is there going to be a half-time hairdryer? I don't know. The ball's into the City half, though, and they're keeping it well. Moving it at speed. Chance to get back into it here. In behind the fullback. Oh, we can't cope with that. The speed at which that moved through the defence is unbelievable. It's 1-1. It didn't last long, but that moment is going to live with me forever. A 1-0 lead against City. Almost a wonderful goal before it as well. And this is one hell of an effort so far. It's probably going to be like the Irish League games in reverse, where we tire late on and maybe get outplayed. But what a first half performance as Cowan releases Scully. The big man's in behind again. Back to Ben Parry. To the byline he goes. There's a few in the middle here. Hasn't managed to get it in. It's deflected away. And Gavi clears downfield. Now look at them. They're leaving the two wingers really high. And it's going to force me to either send the fullbacks into defensive duties. Or accept that we're going to concede a few here. I don't know if I want to change my principles. But I also don't know if I want to take away our attacking threat because I know that that's keeping the pressure off at times as Gaffey releases Crepin into Beal. There's the goal. Manchester City ahead. This is what we expected. We've woken them up, but still, what a half an hour. A competitive game against Manchester City. And now the world-class quality is showing. We've got a free kick on halfway with Smith. And if this goes in, we get a little out of hand, don't we? We don't want to concede a third anytime soon. As they win it back with Gavi again. Catchall gets it to Eugenio. Big ball over to Beal. Defence can't cope. Goalkeeper can't cope. Right, I'm going to do it now. Fullbacks onto defensive duty. Let's just make sure we don't get overrun here. It's already a tricky game for us. And Manchester City, despite the poor start, we've woken them up. Maybe scoring was the worst thing we could have done. 10 minutes to the break. It's 3-1 to City. Neil Kane, bit of an error for that one. We've now got an injury with Mark Scully, and this is a problem. There is no point risking a tight hamstring in the one game of the season we definitely can't win, especially when our sub now is almost as good. Miss Elidis will come on for just over half of the game, and hopefully he'll do a decent job. As Ruiz puts a corner in, Kane goes up, deals with that welder keeper. Fancy one on the counter, or are you going to roll out and lose it? Neil Kane, his distribution is iffy. You never know what to expect. Finds Gavin Reed under pressure. Mixolidis is up though. Good head at the gash. He's got support from Cowan. Goes alone down the right. Finds Stephen Cowan. Chance to cross two in the middle. Mixolidis there. Think it hits the defender. But it goes in and it counts. It is 3-2. And you know what? This is some game. The invisible fans that must be here for this 7,000 attendance. They'll be enjoying this because it's one hell of a fixture. 
and the result and the performance at the moment is really good against one of the best sides in the world as Gavin Reed throws into Smith. Has support from Jude. Imagine we nick a point. Oh, imagine we go forward and nick one as Cowan gives it away. Think that dream might be going any minute now. Crepping down the left. Has scored one already. Gets to the byline. Cuts it back to Eugenio. Got space to run into. It's a brilliant effort. Block to Beal. And the England star up front has scored another one. He has been sublime. And it's 2-4. A one hell of a game. I think now it is officially over. At the hour mark, we're going to take off the fullbacks. Wow. We're being recommended to sub the goalkeeper. That is brutal from the assistant manager. But Tommy Murphy will come on. We've not got Kyle Carr, so Stal will have to stay there. Then Parry's had a shock up, beating the youngster on. And then we're also going to go for Stephen Cowan because he's on a yellow. There's no point taking the risk. We'll bring Damian Dunn on. Merival Austin out to the right. And there's one change remaining if we need it. Though so we've got a corner kick. And we're still fighting in this game. As Beaton puts the corner in. To the back post. The keeper punches. Jude back down for Gash. Damien Dunn on the half volley. Oh, we've hit the post twice now. The first one was stunning from Scully. The second one. A very composed curling effort from Dunn. And he's unfortunate there. Mackenzie's up from a dumb free kick. Headed away to Jude. We're pushing on now. Jude shoots. He's hit the woodwork as well. We've hit the woodwork three times against Manchester City in a game where we're 4-2 down. But ultimately, it's going to be a comfortable win. And this is the stage of the game I'm worried about because City put the corner in. They make it 5-2. And now I'm going to rest one of those tired midfielders. We've got Jordan Gash is motivated. He can have the weekend off. We'll bring off Damian Jude for Neil Daly. There are, what, 23 minutes to go. We can keep it respectable, I'm happy. But either way, we've put up one hell of a fight and we've made it good viewing. The Northern Irish League will not be getting slated based on this performance because we've given as good as we've got. They've just been more ruthless. They've got world-class attacking talent and they might put us to the sword here because it's 5-2. There's still 15 minutes left as Gavi goes for the shot just over. Not a great day for Neil Kane to have a poor one. I mean, you look at the expected goals. City have dominated this match, but... We've been creative at times as Miss Elidis flicks on for Dunn. Is that a penalty kick? Not given. Miss Elidis back to Gash. He goes wide to Miraval Austin. And Gash again. Back to Daly. Big chip over to Beaton on the left. There's three in the middle. Beaton goes alone. The former Manchester United youngster. And Dunn's shot is cleared off the line. Miraval Austin back to Gash. Good save. And it's a corner kick. But I'm so proud of the performance because going forward, We've been really creative. We've hit the woodwork three times. We've forced a couple of good saves. We just had one off the line as well. And we're in again with Beaton down the left. There's two in the middle. Beaton's cross finds done. And it's headed away to him again. Beaton picks it up. 25 yards out. Great turn. Great run. Just over the bar. Manchester United youngster making an impact there. Merival Austin's knackered. He might get the weekend off. But otherwise, a 5-2 defeat. A bizarre glitch with the stadium. But a really good effort. And going forward, well, we gave them a scare, didn't we? A good effort from the lads. The fact they're unhappy tells you a lot. But let's have a look at the schedule and see when we're going to be back. As well as finding out how many home fans were actually there. Because that's going to be the interesting question. Scully's out for a few days. That's all right. The fans were, let's have a look at it, 1,400 away fans. So, yeah, I was just disappeared somewhere. But looking towards the end of the month, November. We've got double header against Linfield, then Fiorentina in a Champions League. I've got to show those final two games of the month. We lost narrowly at Fiorentina in one of the Europa competitions. If we win away at Linfield in that league game, probably title wrapped up already. And then we can focus on cup finals and European football this season. If you're looking forward to that and you did enjoy what was a thrilling game against City, then please do put a thumbs up on the video. Let me know what you think of this side because with Scully and Merivale Austin, we're a completely different level to last year and I'm all for it. If you want to stay up to date and find out if it stays that way, we are getting to the season where those free agents drop their wage demands. Can we bring in another one before the next episode? Well, subscribe and turn that notification bell on to find out. We'll be back in a couple of days time following the head coach returning tomorrow. And my word, this season is shaping up to be special. Mm -hmm.